Hello there and welcome to my little arty corner here on YouTube as I remembered to adjust the autofocus. There we are, just momentarily. Um, I'm Angela, Angela Porter, and I'm so glad to have you join me. Today, I'm going to do something a little bit different, sort of. I'll explain in a moment. But first, can I say thank you to everybody who's subscribed? I appreciate you all so much and I particularly appreciate thumbs up for videos and lovely comments that people are leaving. I'm so humbled by you. I really am. So thank you so much for that. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it means the world to me because it shows I'm doing something that is working for people. Helping you, giving you confidence, inspiration, calming apparently, all kinds of things. So thank you ever so much. Okay, so in front of you, you can see some weird things. This is an, an infinity card. So it's, this is the one I made. I actually filmed what I'm going to do. I won't do this one again though, maybe, something similar, um, earlier and discovered when I went to edit it that there was no sound recorded and there should have been because I hadn't turned it off, I hadn't done anything. Random glitch is all I'm going to say, random glitch. And the infinity card works like this. Can you see there's like um, two pieces of paper that come together here? Well, if you fold them open, we then end up with this on the inside. And I do need to just burnish this using a, a bone folder like it's used to help with paper. So I want to find how I can, I can't fold it out this way, but if I go here, I can flip these out. So I end up with two larger pieces, larger areas here. And again, I'm just going to crease these as I go. And I've got these small squares here. Then if I go this way, I end up with a page that has two big squares in the middle, these long sections, I think, or four small sections. And then when I fold out again, I end up back where I started. And you can keep doing this again and again and again. As I was watching it, because I watched a video by playing with paper and glue on YouTube this morning, as I was starting to wake up, as in I'd been awake for a while, but my eyes were beginning to work and my brain neurons were beginning to fire. My body wasn't quite ready to get out of bed yet, but it was getting there. So I watched this and I thought, oh, wouldn't that be a lovely way of collecting together your favourite patterns and motifs, but in a way that you can flip through them or you can put ones together and, and just look at ones and think, well, these ones will go together. It won't mix and match them. So the ones that are on this side, you'll see these ones together. So you won't see them. You might, you might get a glimpse of them like that or like that, but unlikely to anywhere else. So but I just thought it was a fun idea. This was made for a junk journal, for um, a card to put in or journaling spots or whatever, or um, something like a greetings card of one kind or another. It would be quite fun. And what I did here, can you see this has got like a bite taken out of it? I put a notch there and I only glued it down, well, on three sides, except I've discovered the bottom one didn't stick but I could use it to put something in there. It's just a little bit, either slightly bigger or slightly different color. So it shows here. So you can pop notes or more patterns in there um, or variations or suggestions, how to vary things or color palettes or, or whatever. And then I thought as I was working on the one that didn't get recorded this morning, even though I thought I was recording my voice, wouldn't it be lovely if we could find a way to set something up, whether it's a Facebook group or, what, or some other way, where you could swap these things, where we can share our favourite patterns and motifs and drawings with one another um, from time to time? I don't know what you think about that. I don't know what you think about this, but I'm just floating it out there. Now I'm going to show you how to make one of these. And surprisingly, it's not difficult. What I've got here is I've got some scrapbook paper. This is from one of the Tim Holtz ones. I don't know which one. 
I've got lot. I've got a couple of them in my stash, and the the covers have come off. The papers have got mixed up. But this was actually a sheet that I don't think I'd ever use because it's got all of these little measurements on one side and nice colour on the other. I do like this side. So what I've done is from this, it's a twelve by twelve sheet of paper. So I cut it so it was six inches wide, twelve inches long. And then I cut that piece, so I've got another one to make another one of these if I wish. So that these are three inches by six inches. Okay, so I've got four of them that are three inches by six inches. Then I've scored them. And to do that, I used a scoreboard, but you can just use a ruler, measure across, use a ruler and something like an empty ballpoint pen. I've got one of these ball tools. Um, or I've got my scoreboard, which is what I used. And then I popped it on my scoreboard and I scored at one and a half inches here, four and a half inches here. I flipped it over and I just scored from the other side as well along the same line. So one and a half inches, four and a half inches. Then I flipped that this way and I lightly scored at one and a half inches so down the middle. This wasn't in the original instruction, but I thought I'm not faffing around with little bits, little pencil marks and things like that. I thought, no, this is what I'm going to do. And as all of these will either be covered or will have pieces of paper within them, I'm not too worried if a little bit sticks out the end. So I did that with all, every single last one of these here. So I've got four of them, you can see and they're all the same on the other side type thing. So I'm going to look for ones that kind of, yeah, that doesn't look like it belongs, does it? They, all, they should all sort of go together in some kind of order. That one definitely fits there. Ah, ah, so like that, okay. So I'm going to take two of them, pop those over here, and I'm going to put these two horizontally and you'll see why in a moment. Is it horizontally? Let me check, because I did. Yep, horizontally is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these vertically and glue them on top of these, but only in these four corners. Now I'm going to do this in a way that makes sense to me because you do need to be fairly, you know, sort of like, you don't have to be perfectly precise with these, but you do need to have some accuracy. Otherwise you're gonna be trying to trim this. And I tried making a huge one of these, which I have, but it needed trimming because I forgot that I had to check the measurements of this paper in all directions. I didn't. And um, we have a look which way are these gonna go on, that way. So I'm just going to pop this one at the top and I'm going to do my best to match this up. I'm going to pick it up so I can see what I'm doing. I want the edges level. I've got no extra paper hanging out. So I'll leave that there to set for a moment, but I will also just do this corner as well. It just makes sense to me to do it this way because, well, this is me. So yeah, I did put a lot of glue in. The glue I'm using is called 3-in-1, so it's a beacon, and it's sort of suitable for things like um, fabric and paper and glass and metal, apparently, all kinds of stuff. It's supposed to stick firmly. Apparently it's grabs, instant grab doesn't grab instantly but you have a bit of wiggle time which is what I'm you making use of. That may just be because I'm in Britain, the climate is cooler, often damper and so the solvent doesn't evaporate quite as quickly. So you can see here I've got a little gap, you can just see a bit of black underneath here but you won't see that when I've popped this one on because I'm going to, I want to stick this to the other side like so, but I want it to, I want these to kind of matchy matchy like this. I think it could go the other way. 
let me have a look here and see which way round so I can pick those up. That's it, that's the way I want it. So if I pick it up and over, I can match them that way. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to put glue in these bottom corners and stick this one below this top one here. It's a corner to corner. One corner on another corner, so let's do that. And then, oh, I didn't want to put the glue down at once. I wanted to do one side wall and then the other, but this will be fine. It'll be okay, it'll be cool. Okay, so let's get this. Let's get one side down. This looks bonkers, doesn't it? Looks absolutely bonkers and crazy as if it's not gonna work, and yet it does. Every, t every time I've made it, it's worked. The only thing that's been awkward is my inability, even with a cutting tool, you know, a paper cutter, to cut things square. <laughs> You think I'd be able to do that? No. I don't know what on earth I do, but I always manage to get it a bit on the wonk for some reason. No idea what that is. There we are. So that's it. Basically, the mechanism assembled. I've got a bit sticking out there, so I'm just going to get my scissors and I'm going to see if I can just trim that. It's never a good idea to let me loose with scissors because I'm cack handed left-handed left with scissors and I'm not a natural lefty and of course I can't use right-handed scissors or uh, left-handed scissors because I've only ever used right-handed ones in my left hand so it'll be fine I might take a craft knife to it afterwards so let's just have a look at this I think these should have stuck mostly so gap in the middle so we fold it out now this is where I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the sample I showed you where I'm just going, see I've got some glue oozed out there but that'll be fine. So I'm just burnishing these. I've got one of these tools, I have used the side of this, a paintbrush, a pencil, anything that won't leave a mark, you know, as in ink or paint or whatever will work fine. So where's my middle? It's here so I need to go this way. So again, I'm just going to burnish my folds down so this will sit flatter than it is at the moment. So we've got these here. Then I'm going to open this one and we come back to this where we've got big one, these ones here. And then I go back and we're back to where we start. Now I'm not gonna draw on these sections, but I have cut paper out, which I did for the sample one. And this paper here, this is, uh, I'll tell you now, two and three quarter inches by two and three quarter inches. I need some here that are this length. I'm going to cut tidy ones because my paper cutter needed a new blade. You can see it's been tearing the paper rather than cutting it. Um, so these are one and a quarter by two and three quarters. And I also have some little ones which are one and a quarter by one and a quarter and you actually need eight of each eight of each yeah yes eight of each i'll just double check two sets of four so two sets of four it's eight or four sets of two so i need eight of those no, four sets of two, two sets of four, written in a strange way. So I need eight, 16, 24, you know, sort of like in, in total, except if we use just small squares, then we have an extra eight of these, which takes us up to 32, which gives us just over a month and one for a title or, an, or a, a signature or whatever. Okay. So I'm going, to, I'm going to draw one with you today, but before I do that, I'm going to use a, this is a little um, circle punch. It's one, it's the one inch one. I don't have a smaller, I do have smaller ones somewhere, but I don't know where. So I'm roughly going to just, I'm going to take a little bit of a nibble out of this. So we're going to try and get it 
roughly towards the centre and press that comes oh, comes out and you can see then I've got this little thumb hole through it so that means that if I wanted to put something in here it will show through and I'm going to make that a little bit more apparent could have centered it a bit better but it'll do oh where have I put them oh distress inks that's what I'm heading for didn't think did not think to get them out to begin with because well it wouldn't be me if I wasn't faffing around would it now I want my browns so where are my browns where's the brownie browns down is that them yeah they're down here because I've got a lot of brown in this one. I've got this one, Rusty Hinge, which is one of my favourite distress inks. Don't know what it is about the rusty ones, but I really like them. I'm just going to get a small piece of cut and dry foam, which is what this is. There we go. Get rid of that so I can see that I'm still on screen. There we are. A piece of cut and dry foam. I've got Rusty Hinge. There's darker colours in this, so perhaps I will use a darker colour might use shall I might you yeah use ground espresso because it is a dark brown a little goes a long way and I just want to catch a little bit on the edge here I'm putting it around the thumb hole badly but it'll be okay I'm sure Go like this, and here like that. And I also think I might do. Let me do that. Something else I think I might do is I have got a corner rounder here, and I might round this, not with the smallest corner rounder. I've got one here. It's got little bits of paper everywhere. Perhaps the next smallest. I'll have to re-ink though, that's the only issue, but that's not a problem. So I'm just going to nibble a bit off the corners. Now it's not essential to do this, you could actually just do it by sight or use a, use a coin or something to draw a little circle around and just trim it with scissors. But um, I'm a bit of a mare to say the least, so with scissors. In fact I'm a bit of a mare with distressing today I don't think this one was necessarily the best color to choose but it is what it is now and I've used it and it'll be good enough for today right then so the distress inks are done with my glue is done with my bone folder is done with anything else done with yes the hole punch and the corner rounder so if I pop that on there you can see that I've got that hole has been kind of marked out but we're going to draw in this and I'm so tempted to colour that with distress ink but I'm not going to but if we go to a different page with perhaps some of these marks on that darkness will still show up against that background so that's quite nice okay right then so and it doesn't matter which way you start because you can have it will work round forwards and oh what's happening here it doesn't want to go it does but you can go the other way so it's infinity whichever way round you go it will work okie doke so glasses where did I put my glasses there all right so I'm going to give myself roughly a space here where I'm going to leave a border so I'm just drawing in pencil around here I'm not going to try and fill this in exactly this is just a guide for me to leave a bit of a margin I think and to work within so favorite patterns the one I did earlier it was all variations of poke poke roof poke leaf and I think I might do that again but let's start with something else to grow them from because I do like something that they can grow from. So I'll start at the bottom here. 
and I'm just going to draw. this. Fill that in with black because I can. You do have to let me know, you know this don't you, whether you think this is a totally crackpot idea. Because I know I can have really, what I think are really wonderful ideas and everybody goes, what went on in your brain? And the answer is I often don't know myself. So I'm just going to fill this in with that zigzaggy pattern that I like. Because even though I'm likely to add or use alcohol markers to add um, shadow and bring out highlights and so on, contrast, I still like to add some patterns in. So we've got a nice little place for some poke root or poke leaf or poke something to grow out of. So let's start from the, the top and let's do some poke leaf. So if I zoom in, because now I've done, I've stopped faffing, excuse the mess on my background paper. You'd think I'd get a decent one for working on. Mm -mm, the other side's worse. So as the letter C goes around the top here, and you fill the little spaces in at the end and then poke root. It's just a circle like that. And I'll put a couple of them in here. Like so. And they do overlap, they like to, they seem to like to grow behind each other and jostle each other for space and position. Which is fine. They are what they are. Though I could do without the jostling when it comes to humanity. But these are drawings so they can jostle one another all they like because they aren't going to damage each other. There we go. So we've got some poke root there. So I can add another layer which I'm going to do. I'm going to add some more here. So I'm going to... Do the same kind of thing, that letter C, but I'm going to do this with a bit of a difference. I'm going to draw a ring round it like that so we get a kind of donut stuck on the stem. And then from the bottom part of this donut, I'm going to draw a circle around. Because that is a slight variation. And if you've watched me for long enough, you know that I do like a bit of what Zentangle call aura ring, what I call ribbons or adding a repeat line. I don't know. I've forgotten what they call it officially. Not Zentangle, but you know what we call it. So I'm going to add some more of these and these are just that little bit bigger. And the original poke roots because well they're mutants so they've mutated this donut at the bottom and because they they exist on donuts they just grow a little bit plumper which is a bit fun i actually like that so if we can have a ring there we could have other shapes couldn't we so I'm just putting a triangle there and then I'm going to add my berry-like top there because, well, because simply because we can. So we're beginning to get some variations with poke root. Okay, is there any others? Of course there is. You can vary the shape on the top so easily. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to, I think I'll carry on with this. But instead of doing a circle, I'm going to do a shape that is a bit like this, a bit like a wine glass. But at the top, I'm going to give it 
something that looks like a, a well, like a four-fingered hand. But it's it's really meant to be like um, it reminds me of rose hips or at this time of year in autumn. So we're changing from you know like a berry to a well, a hip is a berry, not the hip on you, the ro hip that the rose produces with its seeds on. Yeah, thought I'd better explain that before you go and you call yourself a scientist. Yeah. I don't call myself one, I am one. <laughs> and an artist. And there's probably many other things that we all, well, we all do many different things. And my belief is that all humans are artists in one form or another. You just have to find the way that you like to express that creativity. So... I do like these donuts at the bottom. It seems to make things like this feel as they're supposed to be. So there we are. We've got some going on there. All right. So next lot. Let's have some leaves. So let's do a classic poke leaf, which is kind of like a heart shape. Well, it is a heart shaped leaf like that. So that's the basic poke leaf. And um, I'll add another one here. Like that. This side is quite thin. And that's a good place to put one of these curves that makes it look like the leaf has folded up and over on itself. Which is quite fun. And then how about we can have perhaps one that grows down here a little bit. For this one, I think I may put a donut on it. But who says we can't have donuts on our poke leaves? There we go. And that's my donut poke leaf. Which I quite like that. Never drawn one of them before, but you know. When in donut land... Let's throw them in everywhere and let's do a triangle one and see if we can get a triangular kind of leaf shape going. Well, I guess so. So let's go over here and do some more. Um, perhaps I can have the stem coming out of this one here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have... A little leaf coming up like that. Slightly bigger one here, slightly bigger one here, and a longer one there. So it looks a little bit like a maple leaf, which is quite cute. And this one, I think with this one I might just pop this here because I do want create a leaf that is vaguely ginkgo leaf shaped like this favorite leaves mine and I quite like the way that it's sort of like almost like a glove on the stem I've got a little space here so you know there's a space that a poke leaf or a poke root can fit into who am I to deny them their existence there we are, it's just an ordinary plain one there. So if we can have ginkgo leaves and maple-ish leaves, we've got to be able to have other kinds of leaves as well, haven't we? So... How about an oak leaf? A little oak leaf there, which is quite fun. These leaves don't really look like leaves, and we could draw a line up there, but what I prefer to do is put like rows of dots where the veins would be. And I'll do it on this one to suggest this too is a leaf. You can do it on the plain poke leaves. I'll do it on the filled one on this in this instance because it would go and 
go under the fur. But here, I think I'll leave these just as they are, the ginkgo leaves. Okie doke, so what else can we do with stems that poke into things? Well, I can't pass up an opportunity to create a seed pod. So here, I don't know if you saw what I did. I'll do it on a piece of paper, nice and clear. So I took the stem. I did the classic kind of letter C shape around it. Then I aurored that. Then I went around this, but not from not from the stem, but carrying this line on around. And I did it again. And I think that will just make a nice space for a nice seed pod to grow. Like so. And perhaps a thinner one here. Perhaps with some seeds in. So that, that is a little different again, but it's just a, a small variation. The shape on the top is the same really as poke leaf, but as a seed pod instead, because we're putting these lines in. Like so. And I'll... Add something to fill this little gap in. So again, we can have another seed pod there. Okay. So I'm going to have a stem growing out of the top here. And let's do another kind of seed pod. So I'm going to have this. And then I'm going to draw like a little flower there with a stopper in. Make it a bit like a poppy seed head. I'm done a very good job because I prefer to draw the flowers and then draw this kind of design. But let's have a look. So if I draw my stem in here and have that coming back down there and draw my little base in like that my little donut in and then I can have this but more like a poppy perhaps with some lines there and some shapes there so this is beginning to get quite interesting Lots of variations, lots of different things. Some very subtle from having just the C to the aura. But then we've got subtle changes in shape to a triangle. Changes in the leaf shape in the seed pods here. And I'm just having a look to see, do I want to fit any more of these in? And the answer is I don't think so. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Draw in my pencil border in pen. I'm going to make it deliberately wobbly because deliberately wobbly is good for these things. And so it's hang drawn. And then I can have a look and see if there's anything I'd like to add. And I may just do here because I've got the space for something small. So I'm just going to put a couple of tiny little poke roots climbing out from this space, perhaps. Just to fill that little bit there. And um, we're a bit sparse elsewhere. It always looks a bit odd when you've got some sparse spaces with um, not a lot going on. 
So, just add a few more here as they are getting out of hand, let's say. Perhaps another one. They're determined to take over the world, these are. And I'm not going to let them. But they can take over this little corner of it, I think. And um, I'll leave it like that, because even though there's a gap there, I'm going to be filling that with some background colour. So let me just move some pens and things out the way. That's what I was going to do. Okie dokes, we can. There, that's brilliant. And I wanted an eraser so I can erase this. Oops, bang crash wallop. So I'm just using um, a kneaded or kneadable eraser here, patty eraser. Softer and gentler than other kinds. Look at that, the ink hasn't quite dried. Always a pain that. I do find it does need a bit longer to dry on marker paper. This is Ohuhu marker paper. And perhaps I'm a bit crazy for wanting to use that. Okie dokes, I've got my sets of greys out because greys are my favourite one. I think I'm going to go, I think I'll go for that yellow grey 100. It's a bit darker than the one I used. I think I used the lightest one in the other one. But I think a darker colour will work in the background will look, work quite nicely here. I don't know, this sort of like yellow grey may actually do really quite nicely here. So I'm just looking at where I need to just fill these little gaps in. I'm not a big fan of brush nibs generally when it comes to markers. But with these, I really am noticing the benefit of them. So I think it's a shame you can't get markers that have got a brush tip and a bullet tip because the chisel nib I hardly ever use. Essentially because I spend most of my time drawing tiny things with tiny spaces between them. Or, you know, I think I've said this before, but they said that nature abhors a vacuum. Well, this Angela abhors blank space in her drawing. I'm getting better at leaving some, but... I said getting better, I didn't mean I was perfect at it. So already this is helping to make sense of what we've drawn, helping to bring some structure and separation to the different elements. It's not it amazing where you take the time and just with something that you think is a simple pattern that there can't be many variations, where they're often the ones that give more variations than the more complex patterns. So with that simplicity comes the possibility of complexity. Whereas if something is very complex, you might be able to make it more complex, but you're more likely to vary it by simplifying, or stylizing it. And I like stylized art. It's what I do best, I think. That comes from my times, you know, as a scientist, you know, when you have to do observational drawings, you, you stylize what you see. It's not an artistic representation. So if you're drawing a flower to show how you identified it, you don't draw it in an artistic kind of manner. You draw it in a sort of like accurate manner with the shapes of the petals, um, the size relative to different things roughly, um, how they're arranged on the um, in the flower, what the stamens are like and so on. And you use microscopes to look to dissect them and look at them microscopically as well and draw those. But they're not meant to be a perfect artistic rendition. They're meant to give the elements of structure so that somebody can go, oh yeah, that that's um I don't know, a bird's eye speed well. Or uh, well, it's meadow sweet that is. Or that's a bird of paradise flower. Because there's enough information there for you to recognise it for what it is. Sometimes colour, often not, but the colour's described in the description, but 
I used to get told off for using very flowery ways of describing colours, but it's blue. No, it's n- it's not blue, says I. It's a pale blue, but there's a hint of pink in it. Angela, we call it blue. Yes, but it's a pale blue. That's a dark blue over there. It's not the same blue. Angela, <laughs> they gave up on me in the end. Yeah, Just wanted to be precise about it, not vague. So... So I guess even back then I was showing my more observationally artistic side without realising it. But I don't know for sure. It's a long time ago. What age would I have been? Between 18 and 21. So, and I'm now a lot older. A lot older. Anyway, so that's given me a nice background. Not, it's not a colour I would ordinarily have chosen a year or so ago. But today, it just feels right. So I've got this colour here and I'm looking for colours that I can use for shadows on these that will stand out against it. And I think... I think these grey-greens would be... I don't think they're going to go with it. The red-greys actually do appeal to me, but I don't think they're going to go see particularly well with them. I'm looking at this here. I think they'll go particularly well. The grey greens though. But that's simply I like these colours. It doesn't necessarily mean I want to use them with this. I want something that's warm. I'm not sure if this is warm or a not warm colour, but I want something that's different. Uh, 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 uh. I don't want blues because I think I would just want greys. So I think I might go with either the cool greys or the neutral greys. I think I might use the neutral greys. So it's CG020. This is the problem now. Oh, there we are. We've got that one. CG2, hopefully. confusing because there's GGs and CGs and they look very similar and then I want the CG030 there we go so I've got these three here so I'm just going to take the lids off them and post them on the other end so they're they're good to go I'll move these out of the way and the other one I want is I've got this one out already from earlier is I have my um, colourless marker as well colourless blender Okay, right, let's start with, which one's the darkest? That one, I think, the 030. So we'll start with the poke root, and I'm going to put some of the dark colour. I don't think that is the darkest, I think. CG, well, this one be. Actually, they're not on much of a difference. That's disappointing. I've gone... I've got the wrong one. All right. I don't want the O30. I want the ONG03. Oh. Hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully this one will be a little bit darker. And it is. Hurrah. Just a smidge darker is all I want. So I'm going to pop this one here. And then, hopefully, I'll have... No, no, no. The same colour. What am I doing here? Jeez. Jeez, Louise. What am I doing? Neutral grey O2. I've got the O3. Oh. 
Do you ever have one of those days where everything just goes weird on you? Today is one of those days for me. And I know the pen is in here. I can see neutral grey 07, but I don't want neutral grey 07. I would like neutral grey 02. And it is NG, is it? Yeah. Or C CG 020. 3. That's crazy. It's sort of like logical numbering seems to be an impossibility here. Is it I want? CG O. Right in front of me. I couldn't see it for looking. Okay, so. Yeah, that is a fair bit lighter. Okay, I'll work the other one out in a moment. I'm using the colours blender because I filled too much of that in with colour. So I'm going to go and use the lightest tone I've got. And I'm going to fill the whole of the, the berry in with this. I'm going to go to the next one, which I think... There's not a lot of difference between these. That's my problem, I think. I've got this one, which is the medium shade. So I'm just putting more around the outside and perhaps a little bit just above that area there. Then, ah, oh yeah, there is a distinct difference. Hurrah. And then to the left and to the bottom, I'm just popping in the darkest shade. And then I'll use the medium just to blend that one in. Just a little. Then I'll go to the lightest tone. And I'm going to try and keep that little bit of white there white, but I am going to use my colourless blender just to soften that edge a little bit. Do the same here. So I am just filling that in. I'll use the, I think this is the darkest one it is. So I want, where they overlap, like here, is where I want a distinct shadow. At the base, I want a shadow and I want it to go around sort of like in a, in a almost like a crescent moon. Um, but still. Uh, still want that shadow around there and I will put my lightest colour around these just to help them fade and blend. But I'm also going to put the colourless blend here. Some of the colour will blend into that space, but not a lot of it. And so I'm starting to get little berries with little highlights and so on. They do fade back, you can see from the first one, so don't be too, too surprised at that if you're using alcohol markers. If you're not using alcohol markers, the principles I'm outlining for where you put shadow and highlight apply to any medium. It really is um, it's that the idea is the same, it's just how you use your medium or what medium you have will, will cause differences. But, um, Where you want the shadows and where you want the highlights won't vary. Okay, let's have that. That'll be better. Sometimes I get the highlights or the shadows too washed out. Just do that there. So we've got this. My highlights possibly a bit too further, too far down on this, but it'll. It'll stay there for what it needs. Okay, I think this is the lightest colour. So we've got that one there. This is the medium. So I'm going to go round this to add the shadow. 
and then I'm going to add this in a kind of crescent moon kind of shape towards the bottom like so then I shall go back with the medium and just blend these edges a little bit and then I'll use the lightest tone just to reinstate this help them to blend out but to keep that highlight in there and just blend that out a little bit okay these little donuts I'm going to put the darkest color on either side of the stem and on the lowest part of the donut I'm going to go a bit further out then I'm going to add some of the medium shade and I'm only going to leave a tiny gap a small gap then for the lightest colour. I'm not going to use the colourless blender here, I'm just going to put the lightest colour in. And then we've got those happening. All right, all of the berries, no matter what shape they are, follow the same, in fact everything follows the same kind of principle. But um, let's have a look. So I've got these leaves here. So for this leaf, I want to leave a highlight towards the centre of the leaf. So if I use my grey marker, my palest one, I can sort of put in the areas where I need some shading, some shadow. And I can then start to add that in, firstly with the medium tone. And then we can get seriously contrasty with this one. But when we go back and use the medium tone it will fade that a little bit which is what I want as they blend together and then I will take my lightest grey and just blend that along the edges and so I've got that little highlight in the middle and the bits the darker bits look like they're falling away the one that's furled is slightly different so I'm going to start with my darkest tone here and this is a good one because I want to put dark tone where this berry over is above underneath this berry on this leaf but I also want to put shadow where the leaf has filled over. So a lot of this, if not all of this underneath, is going to be in shadow. On the side, I'm just going to put the medium at the bottom for a moment. I am going to put a touch of the darkest colour right along the edge there. But at the top, I'm just going to pop in the lightest grey and I'm also going to put a little bit of the colourless blender along the edge just to bleach that out. So that's quite fun. Okie dokes, let's have a look at my ginkgo leaf because that's quite complex really for what it is. Okay. So the ginkgo leaf, I'm going to look at where we've got the bottom of the leaf here. These little sections in between, I'm going to colour in quite dark. But I'm also going to have a dark section there. I'm going to have a dark section on that side. Maybe a little bit of darkness on this side. Maybe some on here. Maybe a weeny bit there. Okay, so CGO30, this is my medium one, I think, I hope, yes it is. So I'm just filling in around the edges here and just extending into these spaces just that little bit. Now I'm going around the top edge of the leaf as well. And then I can come back and add these colours in just like that, like so. And there's my ginkgo leaf. This hoop on the bottom, the donut that it's growing from, do the same thing with the dark, then the medium, and then a tiny bit of the light. We haven't done any stems, have we? For the stem, I'm going to put dark at the top and I'm just going to gradually allow it to get lighter towards the bottom. The space is too small to do any kind of complex blending in. 
So I think if I go through a number of them with the lightest grey, like so, and then use the medium grey. Oh, that was the medium grey. Genius Angela, was it? No, I think this might be the medium. Oh no, this one, this one is. So I'm just going to bring some of the medium back in from the bit that disappears into the leaf. And then I can just add that little touch of darker colour as if this is in shadow as it's disappearing into that area of the leaf. Go back with the medium colour and just fade the edge out tiny, just a tiny, 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 tiny bit. So we're beginning to get some things happening here. I did want to come down here to this because we're not going to ignore my arches because I do love an arch. And you, every now and again you've got to have an arch to have, you know, you want things growing, this is what we do. Something they can grow out of. In this instance. And then my lightest tone here. And I'm going to leave a space where there's just white in between this. So I've got that really bright highlight that's there. Yeah, even though I'm using the colourless blender, it will still look really bright. For this one in here, I am going to use the darkest just under here, the way along, and then on this side, just all the way along again, like so. I've got my medium tone, I think, so I'll just add a little bit along there, like so. And I'm then going to leave the white. I'm leaving quite a stark highlight there. But I think that will work quite nicely. I did notice I've just gotten outside the line there a little bit. I don't know why I'm squashing things away. No idea. Okie dokes. Um, these seed buds, seed pods are all going to be very similar. So the bottom part and around, partly around here is going to be in the darkest colour. These are definitely going to be darkest, the base there. And I'm going to put some dark colour where there is a little bit of shadow, perhaps. I've got the medium colour here, hopefully. So I'm just going to start extending this. I'm going to put the medium on that, on the top far side, because that is a bit further away. So we will have some shadowing going on there. Oh, got to remember these bits. Oh, and let's do the stem while I'm at it. So a little bit of the dark there, that'll work. And then I can just pop this in, leave a bit of a highlight, finish these off. There. And I can just add a bit of a highlight in with that. So it's the same, exactly the same kind of idea, it's just the shape is a bit different, but you think about it in the same kind of way. So up here, I'm just going to, this is the medium colour. Darkest colour is where things overlap and towards the outer edges as well. So I've put quite a lot of the dark colour here. So I'm going to go back with the medium colour. And then I do have my lightest colour here, which will help to blend these out. And I'm just going to fill that in. We go. So I'm going to leave this for a moment. I am going to, I will finish it. I will, I will, I will. But I'm going to attach it to my flippy pagey thing in a moment. But before I do that, I'm just going to go and that sits. I've got that here. I'm going to get my little white gel pen and I'm just going to start to add little white dots in the background just to break this colour up and to add some interest there. I could have used a darker colour fine liner or on this of the similar kind of colour but I chose not to. I am quite enjoying 
finding a use for white gel pens that actually fills me with some kind of contentment or joy even. So not always had a good relationship with gel pens. Don't ask me to write with them because I find that impossible. They won't work for me. I think it's because of the angle I hold my pen at. Very upright, usually. So we're getting there. Just a couple more here. I'm just having a quick scan around and seeing where I can just fit odd groups or single ones in just to make it feel that we've got an, an even-ish distribution of these little dots. I think that works mostly. I'm going to pop one there and then I'm just going to pop some in the highlighted area. Not all the way round, just enough there. And then I'll pop some white spots where the highlight is. Perhaps the odd stray one. We don't want it too perfect. This one. Not so easy on the leaves, I do have to say. But I think that works on there. This one's going to be quite interesting and fun because I can fill these little triangular sections in with dots. So that's quite nice. And along these little donuts as well, we could perhaps add a couple of little white dots there on this one. Here, here, and then on this one as well. Just a couple there. So that's just starting to add that interest to this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find somewhere I'd like to pop this. So where would I like to put it? Would it look I'm not sure about the background colour with that, so let's have a look. We've got this here, so how about... That looks okay, doesn't it? I think it does. So let me get my glue. If I had some double-sided sticky tape, the really strong stuff and thin stuff, I'd use that. And I most probably do have some somewhere. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue along the edge, along the bottom, about the same, that's why it didn't stick last time because I must probably didn't put enough down. And then at this side, let's put some more along the bottom because this will dry fairly quick if I'm not careful. Pick this up, come on, we can do that. We do have tweezers somewhere. So I'm going to pop this one top here. I've got a little bit of time just to wiggle it. That's great. And then that will be my first one here. And then I can just pop something in there. I'm not going to try and poke it right through to the bottom just in case. So if I zoom out you can see what I've created today, the start of anyway. So I hope you'll give this a go. I hope you think about doing it, even if you don't want to create this infinity thing, that you have a go at creating these little tiles that then become references for your, you know, I'd say your favorite patterns. This is mine, one of mine, but you may decide to do something different, but I think having these kinds of patterns in your um, arsenal of patterns, that's the wrong word perhaps, but you know what I mean, in your, in your toolkit for reference to remind you, well, I always like this one, this is one of my favourites, is a way of getting you to use them and, and mix and match. There's such a wealth of patterns out there and ones that have yet been deconstructed as, as tangle patterns 
by whether it's through Zentangle or other people. But it's just a way of collecting them, but a nice way of using them. So I hope you join me again. Do let me know if you'd like to see more of this or do more of this with me. Um, I will put a link to the tutorial for this size of um, flip book. Um, my other one is here. It actually looks smaller, but it's not. <laughs> this just looks, why does that look bigger? Who knows? Colour, pattern, I don't know. But um, I, I hope you'll give it a go and I'll see you again. Let me know. And um, thank you for watching. Take care now. Bye-bye.